Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Monday the 21st of August 2023 and today's Mill news um, news of the under 21 game we're going to lead off with that for a rather strange reason um, about five first team players were involved in uh, the under 21's game today which uh, is weird in itself. The reason why that's weird, extra weird, is because obviously we played yesterday. What well, I'd say played, we turned up um, and run around on the pitch a bit uh, at Carrow Road on Sunday yesterday. Now, normally after the day after a game, the players get the day off. Well, today is Monday is the day after a game, and we've got some players that were involved in. Uh, the game yesterday at Norwich, and they're playing a game for the under 21s. Um, bizarre, 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 bizarre. Is this Gary Rowett um, not happy with the fitness of the players? Uh, is he trying to make a point? What about the other players who did weren't involved in this? Did they still? Did he make all of the players come into training as some kind of punishment? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe he did. Maybe he uh, put his foot down and uh, play, played the tough guy with the, with the players and made them come in on their day off. Maybe he's going to give them a day off uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but I'm sure they don't probably want to appreciate uh, the changing of the protocol um, that you would have the day off after a game. But here we go. Let's talk about the under 21s. <laughs> It's the youth that's leading the way. Um, we've scored for the first team scored two goals uh, so far this season, and both of them have been scored by uh, the young talent. Uh, one from Romain Essay and one from Adam and So, uh, Mill under 21s see off Burnley at Calment Road. A Mill under 21s defeat Burnley 3-1 in the Professional Development League on Monday afternoon. George Evans gave the line. George Evans, not the goalkeeper, George Evans. Uh, the midfielder, George Evans. George Evans gave the lines the lead at Calment Road, and although the Clarets equalised, second half strikes from Edomu Maku and Seb Drozd. Yes, Edomu Maku, that player, the one who actually turned up yesterday and looked good when he came off the bench and scored that win, uh, that goal, his first goal in English uh, football. I've seen a lot of people saying his first goal in professional football, kind of uh, insulting to St. Pats. He played in the Champions League and scored for them. Uh, tech, I don't know about some Pats. Are they an amateur side? Are they semi-pro? I'm not too sure, but uh, kind of insulting um, to say that. So I'll say his first goal in English professional football. Uh, and Seb Droz eased part, uh, Kevin Nugent's side to three points. Uh, the manager was able to field, here we go, Evans, Wes Harding, Ryan Leonard and Imaku, plus the goalkeeper Connell Truman. At a baking hot training ground with the former opening the scoring in some style in 13 minutes. Curling an effort past the goalkeeper from outside the penalty area. Uh, yes, yeah, so George Evans. Curling shot past the uh, 15-year-old goalkeeper. Or whatever, however he is old. Uh, Burnley's team was an actual uh, young team. Uh, a drilled effort then got the visitors back into the game before half-time. Uh, but Millwall controlled the restart to secure the victory. Firstly, Amaku was well paced to turn home Abdul Abdul Malik's cross for his second goal in 24 hours. The Irishman netting his first day of the Senate here, first professional Millwall goal. Millwall, first professional Millwall goal. Uh, they're mixing it up there. Uh, on Sunday at Norwich City, uh, before Draws throws eyes from a corner kick to head home to seal success. Uh, yeah, kind of sad uh, seeing uh, Ado. Ado um, uh, score because he didn't celebrate and he had a face like a smacked ass because his team was still losing 3-1 um, which is what you want to see to be honest like so he's obviously upset at the the, uh, the way the team's playing uh, next up for Mills under 21s is a trip to Hull City on Wednesday the 30th of September and at the moment that game is set to be played at the MKM Stadium um, wherever that is I think that's Hull's ground but but Mill's next home game on I think it's the fourth or the third of third of uh, hang on. I just that date is wrong. That's supposed to be Wednesday the thirtieth of 
uh, August. That's wrong. So Mill's next home game is supposed to be the 4th of September. This game coming up is the Wednesday the 30th. They moved that game to the training ground. So I'm going to guess that uh, Gary Rout is going to try and do the same thing again and get uh, the first team squad to summon them playing match minutes in a game under 21 game against Crew. Yeah, so that game's against Crew. Uh, match stats. So here's the team. Truman, Smith, Adam Malachy, Harding, Leonard, George Evans, Lawson, Grant, Emaku, Abdul Malik, and Leahy. They started. And of course, on the hour mark, TikTok, that's uh, bog standard time you change the players. All of the first team uh, players came off. So you've got Vid coming in for Harding. Cotton coming on for Leonard. Uh, Walker coming on for George Evans. And you've got Droz coming off for Maku. Um, and the unused substitute was the goalkeeper, George Evans, the 18 uh, year old goalkeeper. So, as has ever happened before, any statos out there, two Millwall players with the same name. George Evans and George Evans. Um, one, one, uh, one, a 18 year old goalkeeper and one, a 28 year old midfielder. Be interesting to know. Uh, has there ever been two Millwall players with the same name in the same team? And I don't know, but uh, they have now because it's here. Now. But if they haven't, it's here now. It's in the same squad, but. Yeah. It's an under-21 game, so does it really count? Uh, yeah, this is a weird one. What's happening here? Uh, has Gary out lost the plot? What's, he, what's going on here? Uh, there's a there's a first-team game on Sunday and an under-21 game on Monday, and he's got four of the players playing uh, in this under-21. So Truman was on the bench. Adam Malachy was on the bench. Obviously, I, they didn't come on. Harding came on. Leonard Did Leonard come on against Norwich? I'm not sure. George Evans and Imaku, obviously Imaku came on the score. So what's going on here, Gary Rao? What's going on here? Uh yeah. Is this a punishment? If you don't if you don't play well, you're gonna play for the under twenty last week. Like Imaku played well. You're trying to get them fit, is it because obviously I think some of these players obviously came back from injury. Um I think Leonard and Imaku, but then Murray Wallace was injured. Um, so maybe we do, he doesn't think they're match fit. Obviously, Maku uh, didn't really have a summer holiday. He was getting back to fitness, and then he went to the Ireland under twenty ones, um, played in that. So yeah, is he trying to get them match fit? Is he trying to get them fit? I don't know. I don't know. Very weird from Gary out now. Um, is this this is. Is this a sign of the coming of the end? The beginning of the end? Making weird decisions, doing weird things. Don't make sense to anyone from outside. Maybe they make make sense to people inside the club, but you've got a, you've got a first team game on Sunday, you've got a under twenty one game on Monday, and you're making players who are involved in that game, albeit it was at twelve o'clock. It wasn't that far away, it was only in Norwich. Uh how many was that like fifty miles away? But you're making them Come in on a Monday when they're supposed to be off and playing this under 21 game. Even though some of them, like a Maku, was like the star of the show, scoring a goal, consolation goal. It's not like there is the players that didn't perform. Because if it was that, you'd put Fleming in here. Uh, yeah, what's going on? What's going on, Gary Rowett? Are you losing the plot? Is there a rhyme or a reason why you're doing this? I don't know. It seems all very weird. It seem, does seem very weird. Um, but again, maybe it's just fitness. Trying to get them fit. Match fit. Who knows. Uh, so, the under-21 manager, Kevin Nugent, hoping to nurture a new crop of under-21s. Uh, I mean, well, here's the thing. Maybe it's the other way around. Because we know... We know the under 21s have uh, been weakened this season. Their best players have gone out on loan, and two of them have gone into the first team with SA and Amaku. 
maybe they're a bit short and he's asking, do you have any players I can, who can play for us? Maybe it's gone. It's, it's the other way around. Maybe it's Kevin Nugent asking for players. Don't know. No idea. Absolutely no idea. So Mill under 21's boss Kevin Nugent praises players for their effort on Monday afternoon. Goals from George Evans, Adomo Maku and Seb Droz. Saw the Lions beat Burnley 3-1 in the Bristol Development League at Calment Road. Uh, easing through the second half after a competitive first in the Bromley Heat. No game ever begins comfortable, comfortable, but you can turn it into a comfortable one by the end of it, Nugent told MillWFC.co.uk. The lads had to graft for the first three points today. Uh, Burnley on the side. Uh, they put in a real stint in the first half and continued that into the second. Evans was joined by Ryan Leonard, Wes Harding, Connor Truman, and Dimaku as first team players in the lineup. I've been doing this for a few years, and any time that the first team players have stepped into our group, they've been absolutely fantastic. Uh, today, it epitomised that, and that inspired the younger lads who sh should have seen that as really good for their development as well. Uh, Mill won the Professional Development League South Division and National Final Double last season. We'll hope to defend those across the course of the 23-24 season. But Nugent erred on the side of caution when discussing those heady heights once again. It's difficult because the team changes every year because we did well last season. Uh, some of those lads are now out on loan. So it's, it's now about getting a, a new lot through and making sure we play to their strengths. So there you go. So he's not, no, he's not really giving anything away why the first team players are involved. Maybe it's just the bulk of the team. Um, but, uh, yeah, what's going on? Uh, we've got pictures from that game. So, off, you can see the ones involved. There's Wes Harding there. Uh, George Evans after his goal. Getting a celebration. Doesn't look too happy, does he? But they don't look too happy, Wes Harding and George Evans. Obviously, Adam Malachi does. But they, they, they don't. So maybe it's all they, they've been forced to play in this game. Uh, Ryan Leonard there. Bill Jevons, uh, Edamo Maku, there he is uh, taking a shot on, Abdul Malik, sprinting along, hard to see anyone involved in the back, is that Gary Rowett there in the background, blurred out, standing on his own, is that him, I don't know, I don't think so, but who could it be, um, George Jevons again, so you can't really see who's in the background, if the fir other first team players were there, and if they were watching the game, well, they made. Is that Fleming there in the background? That looks. Is that Fleming there, in front of that white van? Uh, I don't know. It does look 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 a bit like him if you squint a bit. Um. So yeah, maybe they did. Maybe the, the other first team players were told to come into training today. Uh huh. Um. There you go. There's. The actual under-21 team that were on the pitch at the end celebrating the win. Um, and there you go. So, yeah, weird one, was it? Weird one. What's going on there? Now, obviously, first team is all doom and gloom. Uh, disaster. Disaster. Under-21's doing well, even if they did get a little bit of help from uh, the first team pros. All the under-18s uh, under are off on them as well, because they played Burnley as well. Uh, they play Saturday morning, so they don't play uh, the under 21s because obviously they've finished school, most of them are 18 and over. They play uh, weekday afternoons, which is, if you're involved in that as a football manager or a coach, a pretty decent job for you to get the weekends off. Um, but not so if you're an under 18, you've got to get up early and go Saturday mornings around the country. So this is from. Uh, this is from MillFC.co.uk. Mill under 18s begin their 23 24 professional development league campaign with a 4 1 win at Burnley. They were away to Burnley on Saturday. Uh, looking to go one step further than their playoff semi final defeat last season. Yet yeah, they got into the playoffs, uh, which they finished second in their group, I think, and then they lost their semi final. Um, Cavalli Haywood. Gave the Lions the lead with a penalty kick in the 28th minute with Frankie Baker making it two just a minute later. Wow. And Mill added one more before the halftime break through Jack Howland. Well, Haywood's, uh, Haywood scored his second and Mill's fourth in the second half. Callum West pulled the goal back for Burnley on 86 minutes, but that proved as mere consolation as the Lions started the season with three points. 
uh, Mill under 18s are next in action on Saturday as they take on Peterborough United at Calment Road. And there we go. I, I'm just going to struggle with this. Przwozny in goal. Hodgman, Olgbodi, Massey, Mansour, Stevenson, Beaumont, Machiochia, Baker, Haywood, and Howland. Uh, so there you go. Uh, interesting stuff. Uh, the under 18s and the under 21s getting it done. Um, and ironically, in the first team, it's the same thing. As I said, Romain S and Erdomo Mack are the only two players to score for us in, what is it, four games now? Three games? Uh, four games. Uh, so, moving on. New stadium tour. Dates on sale. This is from millfc.co.uk. And here we go. Wednesday the 13th of September. Wednesday the 20th of September, which is the Rotherham United game, so that's a pre-match tour. So if you're coming over for from abroad for this game, maybe bundle it up with going on a little tour of the ground, um, as well as uh, going to watch the ground at the, at the uh, end of the day, 7.45 kickoff, I believe. Uh, Friday the 22nd of September, and Monday the 25th. So really pumping out these tours now, aren't they? Um, must be, Hopefully they're, they're probably selling them out. Uh, here's the prices. Obviously, these seem these are just normal tours, I think. So it's the top pricing. And there you go. If you're interested in that, uh, there there's the uh, information to do that. Moving on now to talking of tours. This tour has been mentioned before. They got a new one coming up. Uh, Sunday, the, September the 10th. I think that's uh, the international break because they normally do these international break. So what is that? What is that? Um, is that three weeks away? Three weeks away, I think. Uh, Mill FC History and Heritage Walking Tour. Walking Tour. 25 years on the Isle of Dogs. Yes, you go to the Isle of Dogs, and then you you meet up with uh, the uh, what do you call what do you call them? Um, the the walking guide and other other Mill fans who turn up for the event, and you walk around. So you'll meet up at West India Quay, and uh, it's three hours, and you walk around, and it'll tell you all about um, the early history of Millwall Football Club, uh, when they were on the Isle of Dogs from 1885 to 1910. So you can see this is the fifth event, fifth out of the Burr event, a special trip back in time to discover all of the key highlights of our famous old football club's early existence on the Isle of Dogs, uh, discover the very place where we were founded, the pub culture instilled from day one, the workplaces of our fan base, our club headquarters, plus all four sites of our very first football grounds in 25 years time space before we moved across the river. Uh, yeah, many, many, uh, bit of a, what would you call it? Vagabond history, tramping history, moving from ground to ground in 25 years, having four different sites before they think, oh, we've got to do something about it. You can't go on like this. We need to find something a bit more permanent. And then they end up going over the river. Uh, this is a history and heritage tour which explores Mill's life on the Isle of Dogs, the early days, the rapid progress, the highs and the lows of the once leading light of London football. Uh, learn how an amazing FA Cup run led to our nickname, uh, the Dockers, uh, would lead us to be known, known as the Lions. Uh, the Isle of Dogs has an history. The Isle of Dogs has an interesting history too, which is interwoven into the very fabric of our DNA. You will hear some of the myths debunked, some less known secrets, plus. Plenty of amusing anecdotes to keep you smiling. We take a half-time break in a pub, which was our previous headquarters, and have a quiz with prizes, which is always great fun. Anyone who walks the walk will also receive a souvenir booklet. If you join us on this tour, we shall endeavour to provide you with both a memorable London tour experience, but also a unique, a unique insight into the history of Millwall Football Club. And it's this is from Eventbrite.co.uk. So if you go on that and search for Millwall, this should be one of the things that comes up. Uh, it's called Mill FC History and Heritage and Walking Tour. Uh, I'm not involved in this. Uh, it's nothing to do with me. I'm just, I thought it's interesting and I wanted to let you know about it. I've let you know about the ones before. And there's various uh, quotes and stuff from people who've been involved, including who've been on the tour before, including Jeff Burnage and Mickey Simpson. You may know them. Um, there's some pictures there uh, of the previous tours. So there you go. Obviously, when they go to. Um, when you go to the Isle of Dogs, it's a peninsula on a weekend. It's absolutely dead. It is so, so quiet there. Um, it's like 
And the same kind of with Rotherive, actually. It's because it's peninsula and you don't, there's no through traffic. You only go down there if you have to go down there. But there's no people driving through it, so it is uh, very quiet at the weekends. Very quiet most of the time, actually. It's really the one long road that goes around the whole of the island, Manchester Road. Um, so there you go. There's the photos from previous tours and stuff. And uh, t-shirts and stuff and stuff. So uh, I should probably stop saying stuff. Um, say other words other than stuff. But there you go. Not bad stuff. Substance stuff. Uh, moving on to... The Lone Watch is a Monday, so how did the Mill Lonies get on at the weekend? Well, let's have a look from millwfc.co.uk. Uh, Mill's Lonies in focus. Two of Mill's four Lonies were in action this past weekend. In North London, Nana Boateng played the second half of Woking's 2 0 Banarama National League defeat to Barnet. The Cards found themselves 1 0 down at the break due to Zach Brunt's strike, but although Boateng attempted to help Woking back into the game after the break, a further goal from Brunt on the hour condemned them to a loss. Elsewhere, Chinock Lee played the full 90 minutes as Bromley secured a clean sheet in a feisty encounter at Kidderminster Harriers. Cole Kipikawa and Jack Lambert were both given their marching orders at Agbara in the draw. Uh, so it was a nil-nil draw. Uh, deducing that. Uh, Joe Wright was an unused substitute in a ding-dong affair at Prenton Park. Meanwhile, as Callum Hendry's a hat trick and Matt Smith's goal handed Salford City a dramatic 4 3 win at Tranmere Rovers in Skybet League 2. Uh, Alex Mitchell also watched uh, on from the bench as Lincoln City beat Shrewsbury Town 1 0 in Shropshire. Yeah, we, he joined late on this week, didn't he? So I didn't expect him to play. Um, and here are the games coming up. Uh, Bromley's game is on Friday, uh, 7.45. That's an away to Rochdale IS. Kind of a weird one. Is that going to be on TV? A lot of the National League games are on TV now. Um, Woking are away to Gateshead. Salford at home to Hackman and Stanley. And then you can see you're at home to Blackpool. So there you go. Um, now, moving on to this from uh, talksport.com. Uh, don't really feature them much, but uh, it's one of the stories that popped up. Um, I don't know if you watched the Crystal Palace a game against Arsenal uh, tonight. Obviously, they had a it's their first home game in the season, I believe, and they took the time to um, have a minute's applause, a, a commemoration. Uh, firstly, I think for Trevor Francis, but they they kind of bundled that up with John Berylson because I think they were doing it anyway for Trevor Francis. So, um, probably just um, throw John Berylson in there as well. Might as well make make themselves look good. And yeah, they do. They did. They do look good coming out of this. So Crystal Palace put rivalries aside, paid tribute to Mill legend John Berylson, head of the Cash River Arsenal. Berylson, who was Mill's chairman, had been associated with the club since 2006, but passed away in July after being involved in a car accident. So there it is. There you can see. So obviously Trevor Francis is at the top, their former manager, and uh, then John Berylson as well. Uh, the 70 year old was a hugely popular figure that then a reputation that spread to other clubs around the country, including their fierce rivals, Selhurst Park. Uh, despite their hostile on field relationship, the Eagles showed genuine class holding minutes of applause for him and not in a forest icon Trevor Francis before the Premier League contest with the gun as well. Clearly, in that photograph, you can see uh, Trevor Francis has a tracksuit with uh, the Crystal Palace logo on. So I don't know. They, I don't know if the person who wrote this, because it's just someone who's like typing it. It might even be an AI by now, but someone's like picking a story up off of Twitter and just writing up a story, because you'll see they start quoting uh, me all fans from Twitter. Um, but they probably don't even understand that Trevor Francis was uh, their manager. Uh, as well as being impeccably observed in the stands, Palace owner Steve Parrish joined club legend. Mark Brighton, England boss Gareth Southgate in paying tribute in the stands. Uh, the tribute was greatly appreciated by me. All took to Twitter to write various tweets that I'm not quotes. You can see them there. Um, Mill. This is from Mill's official uh, Twitter though, so they did that. They put that out. Um, and then you've got the quotes from Mill fans. And uh, yeah, there you go. And speaking of John Berylson, 
obviously the, the shirts from the Bristol City game, which was uh, obviously to com commemorate him before the game. Uh, the game itself was uh, absolutely dire and ended up in defeat, which was a bit of embarrassment all around. But before the game, it would um, it was what it was. Um, uh, quite quite uh, touching and uh, meaningful. Um, the shirts from that game, with the special embroidery of the JGB logo, uh, were auctioned off, and we now have the results. The total amount raised was £8,735, and interestingly, the winning bid, uh, the highest winning bid, was £585 with Billy Mitchell. Well, why is that interesting? Because I think Mill did this like three or four times last season, and it's always been kind of Fleming who was uh, number one but he's way down the pecking order now probably that because of his uh, he's flirting with leaving the club and going to Premier League Burnley maybe I don't know um, but we've got Billy Mitchell, McNamara, Hutchison, uh, Bradshaw and Watmore the top five maybe it's just based on, on players who played well in that game I don't know. Um, maybe it's just personal favourites no idea but um, there you go, you can see as we go down. Um, so SA surprisingly at 408. Um, and the lowest one of the ones that was worn on the pitch was Ryan Leonard, 364. And then you've got ones of the ones that were issued but weren't worn. And Interestingly, the most of so the unused substitutes, the highest was for Harding, four hundred thirty-one pounds, uh, which is higher than Jake Cooper's, Casper De Nors. So that's interesting. And the lowest of was George Evans, three hundred twenty-eight of the unused substitutes, but the lowest overall as well. Uh, but altogether, um, eight thousand seven hundred thirty-five pounds raised. Um, the badges that were on sale at Mills Sports Club sold out. Uh, they've ordered more in, but they're holding them for people who go to the game, the Stoke game. So people who want to buy them in person, they're holding them back for them first, and then they're going to put them online after. Um, so, yeah, lots more to come. So, good stuff there. Uh, and on that note, thank you for watching, and goodbye.